Hey guys, Jarek here and welcome to Ember Escape. And I have a bunch of pieces of freshly polished amber and these babies were neglected for some time now. And by neglected babies I mean the prehistoric insects inside. And today I will try to make some macro photos for this. So let's not waste any time and start. All of these pieces of amber are from the mid-Cretaceous period, over 90 million years old. That's the period when the dinosaurs were still dominating the earth. All of these pieces contain organic inclusions, either of an insect or a plant. Most of the inclusions are super tiny and impossible to identify with naked eye. With microscope we will easily identify the inclusions and will see quality of preservation. There is a lot of factors why some of the inclusions are amazingly preserved and others not so well. Okay, everything is ready to make some pictures. I have the illuminator here, so let's just turn it on. And let's <laughs> place some ember under it. For that I will use a plastiline to hold them in one place so they won't move when I will be taking pictures. Yes, that's toy for babies. And so let's pick our first ember. I don't know which one, doesn't really matter. Let's try this one. This first piece has a coleoptera beetle inside, and the beetle appears to be very black. That was probably a black beetle, but it's also oxidized. I tried changing the lights in various positions, but without much success. It's a cool beetle, but preservation is quite poor. Chitin is cracked and broken in various places. Still looks good for its age. Okay, well, unfortunately I didn't manage to get a good picture for this little bug. It's very black and as we could see it's quite damaged, but no problem, <laughs> we have a high variety of insects still, so I, I'm pretty sure we will get some good pictures of other pieces, like this one, very nice shape. After the beetle I did some more adjustments with the lights. I'm using circular and rectangular LED lights and illuminator from the top. This setup worked the best that day. The lighting is very important when making any sorts of photos, and especially macro shots. The second insect is Trichoptera, the caddis fly. In comparison with previous bug, preservation on this one is insane quality. It looks still alive. We can see each hair on the body, beautiful wings and eyes, and this photo I am very happy with, probably one of my best shots. If I will ever do a physical photo book, I will use this photo for it. Take your next piece, maybe this one. This will be a Gatteroptera stink bug. This little bug is from the order of insects called Hemiptera. It has a long proboscis either for sucking nectar from the angiosperms or the fluids from other insects. There's a chance that this is Reduvidae, the assassin bug. I'm not sure for 100%, either way very cool looking and have unusually large eyes. What do you think is inside of this piece? All I can see without microscope is long length and slim body. Considering it's so small, around 2 to 3 mm in body length, I didn't expect to be a cricket. And it totally is. Looks quite unusual, but it was identified by cricket's expert to be in Tetinogidae family, but its long antennas are quite unusual. Okay, now it's turn to make some photos for the plants. I love plants in amber very much and I have two very neat specimens. These ones. One is just some sort of leaf and another one is either a fern or some sort of metasequoia or something like that. Let's put them into under a microscope. I am having my doubts about the identification. It's either a fern or some sort of pine-like branch. 
Either way, lines in amber are gorgeous, and this one has weird colorful mineralization on the some of the body, with blue being the dominant color. Now that's a cute symmetrical leaf of a plant. It looks quite hairy on the sides, but I don't have an ID for it. It's not that big, half centimeter at most. And today's biggest piece of ember, it's like rice, piece of rice. Okay, let's check what's inside. Can't tell with naked eye. Another Coleoptera beetle, way smaller than the previous one, definitely different species, but way better preserved than the first one. Tiny rice sized piece like this could make a cool ring or an earring. This is the biggest piece of them all, with nice shape and pleasant yellowish color, but inclusion is probably the worst, some sort of a fly or a wasp, but very poor condition, plus it's damaged at the tip of the ass. But there's two more super tiny PP flies in the same piece, which is nice. This next piece contains a Psotsoptera, more commonly known as book lice or bark lice. It's tiny in size and quite common in amber. The difference they have to dipteras, the flies, is that they own two pairs of wings instead of one. And there's many many species of these insects, both extinct and present. This wouldn't be an amber inclusions video without at least one cockroach. This is cockroach larva, super tiny, less than 3 mm in body length. Not in the best shape, but it's neat. Cockroaches belong in Blatodea family, which is one of my favorites. It contains crickets, mantises, termites and other goodies. This piece contains one more Psotsoptera, but it's different species than the previous one. This one looks perfectly preserved and by luck I did some pretty good pictures for it. Love the veins on the wings especially, wouldn't ever believe that it's around 100 billion years old. From this piece I expected nothing, because I barely see what's going on inside. But turns out this little piece has a very nicely preserved flying insect. I will mark in the comments what kind of insect, hopefully. This next flying bugger is in very weird position. If I would have to guess, I would say it's Lepidoptera, a moth fly. But if someone knows better ID, let me know in the comments. Two final pieces of today is Enitsocephalidae, more commonly known as gnat bugs or assassin bugs. These were tiny predators of the dinosaurs filled prehistoric forests. They are quite uncommon, so it's nice to have them. Claws look sick, I would even say that they look like burrowing claws, and pointy snout is used to pierce its prey body and suck out the fluids. And that's it for the video, I've got quite a bit more of pieces that needs attention in repolishing and recutting and make some, making some more pictures. So if you did enjoy this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will make more content like this in the future. And thanks for watching, see you next time and bye!